Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Roadside Reviews and boy do I have a treat for you today. We are going to be taking a look at the all new 2021 Hyundai Elantra and just not any Hyundai Elantra, the Hyundai Elantra Limited. This car has been around for a while, I mean by a while, almost decades at this point. It's actually on its seventh generation, even though it's always had the stigma of being the Econo box, the car that you buy out of necessity and not want. Uh, you know, just something that's going to be inexpensive and you can be able to beat up and that's it. And Hyundai really wanted to be able to change that up. Really wanted to be able to get into the game as far as the compact, import, fuel efficient, fun to drive, technology pack sedans. And they've really, really made their mark here with the 2021 Elantra. In a segment where you see a lot of the dominance is going to be on the Toyota Corolla, the Honda Civic, and even the Nissan Sentra as far as on the imports for the compact side. And a lot of the domestics actually kind of pulling out of that market. You know, Ford, you know, not making sedans or small cars anymore. I think that just really leaves Chevrolet and Chrysler still left. And, you know, quite honestly, they don't have the brand recognition or the loyalty that you would see. Really kind of leads it up to these three or four different cars in the segment. And Hyundai really wants a piece of that pie. And their left hook or right hook, whatever jab they wanted to be able to throw to be able to get back in that segment, is going to be this car here. And from the ground up, 100% brand new. And this is not the old Econo box that we're used to. Complete redesign. And I mean, even if you start at the very front of this vehicle, a very aggressive front end look, you see this nice, almost waterfall-esque hood with the two body lines that run right into the center of the Hyundai logo, which is gonna be this larger one too. So that seems to be the trend now as far as the larger front badging this beautiful grill, and it's almost kind of reminiscent of the uh, Hyundai Sonata. And everybody kind of calls this the Hyundai Sonata's little brother, and some truth can be said to that, but even when compared side by side, these cars are still very different, but similar in their own ways. And you'd expect that, of course, keeping it within a brand. Everything from what you see when the grill seamlessly meets up to the front headlamps, this one being the limited model, you have high and low beam LED projector bulbs, LED full-time uh, running lights as well really sets off the appearance of it and of course the amount of design that goes into it so not only is it just there to be functional but also keeping up with the aesthetic view of the vehicle they've done a very very good job turning what would be a compact economy car and really turning it into an aggressive looking vehicle something that you would want to be able to own and drive something that you'd want to be able to show off now like i said this is the seventh generation of it they're wanting to get back into it they really had to change everything up from there and even coming over here to the side, you'll see on this limited model, we do have the 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels. They are on a five spoke, very aggressive pattern as well. Still have the machine finish for the alloy on the outside. Then of course the darker inlay, that seems to be the trend right now as far as uh, what's popular on the newer vehicles. And these are wrapped in Kumo tires. And the one thing I can tell you about when I drove this vehicle is the amount of interior noise you get, especially while you're driving at freeway speeds. These tires do a phenomenal job as far as keeping the decibels down. I would really, I would bet to say that this car is as quiet, if not more quiet driving down the freeway than its Sonata counterpart. Something huge, especially for a vehicle in this class. Coming down the other side, typical paint to match door handles. It's in this beautiful quartz white, and I don't think you can be able to see it you know, on the camera so well, but just the amount of shimmer that this paint has, it really pops. It's like a very deep pearlized paint. Just really, really got a lot of depth to it. Paint to match door mirrors as well. And then the biggest thing you're gonna see from the side of this car is the geometry that they put into the styling. Not only do you still have the front body line that runs from the front wheel arch all the way to the rear tail light, but you can see even these triangular segments that run it running along the front driver door that continues into the uh, back doors as well. Really just, just a sharp design, you know, nothing's curvaceous about it. Nothing kind of leads to that aerodynamic bubble that we've seen in a lot of other cars. Really making a statement, making sharp, good looking clean lines that follow all the way through to the rear. And yes, this looks a little familiar a little bit like the Sonata in the back. You do have that one tail light that goes from side to side all the way from there. And the other thing you're notice too is this is a wide car. Now the new Elantra is wider than the previous model. It is also a little bit longer as well. So that's going to equate to a little bit more stability while driving, but also interior room. Also sits a little bit lower too to be able to help with that drag coefficient to help improve fuel mileage. 
So that gives you 31 miles per gallon in the city, 41 on the freeway, and gives you a total combined of 35 miles per gallon in a non-hybrid car. And now that's out of a two liter four cylinder engine that's new for this vehicle that has 147 horsepower too. Top notch, one of the most powerful engines in its class, but then having that great fuel mileage with it as well. Love the Elantra spelled out across the back. Once again, it's not just focused on that it's a Hyundai, but actually the, the model of what it is. And then of course you have your limited trim so everybody knows what you're driving. You have this beautiful glossy black diffuser on the bottom of the bumper, which really kind of sets it off. You're gonna see that on a lot of sports cars. Not only a great look, it is functional for aerodynamics, but really continues that tie into that aggressive look that you'd see with the rest of the styling on this car from the front to the rear. They really didn't look past anything. They wanted to make sure that it was 100%. Now, getting into the trunk of the car, it's big. <laughs> that is a big, big trunk. It's actually gonna be, was I think about eight to 10% larger than what you'd see on the uh, standard Corollas as well. So lots of space. It does have a 60-40 split folding rear seat. So if you need a little bit extra room to be able to carry something, you know, uh, coming back from the electronic store or the home improvement store, you can be able to fold down one side or the other. So you're not limited to have to borrow your buddy's SUV or pickup truck. You can be able to still haul everything inside of here. Now the other big part too is how deep this trunk is. So it just doesn't stop there. Being, like I said, the wider and lower stance offer a lot more cargo room. A lot more than, like I said, a lot of people would expect. This is something you'd see out of like a full size sedan, not something in the compact segment. And then coming along over here to the driver's side, a lot of the same design cues. The biggest thing that you're gonna notice about this vehicle is gonna be the interior. Yes, the exterior has been completely redone. Yes, it's a very sharp looking vehicle, but the real, real showstopper is the new interior. Now this one being the limited, it does have the white leather seats that are perforated. The front seats are heated, but the one big noticeable thing that everyone's talked about so far is if you look at those door panels, those aren't leather. That's actually gonna be almost like a, uh, a fine fabric. You know, when I see it, I think of something like a nice overcoat or, you know, a uh, sport jacket, as you would say. And it, to me, it matches really, really well, you know, with the color combination that this car comes in. Everything from your window motor uh, controls, door locks, mirror controls, everything's laid out typical fashion. But everything, even from this, if you look at this aluminum grill right here up on the top for the tweeter, the speaker, you know, it, it's made with a lot of precision and it looks like it's supposed to be there. It wasn't an afterthought and it really kind of ties in that whole door panel. So not only is it very functional, but like I said, it looks really, really good too. Now with this car, you do have the six way power driver seat with power lumbar support. And the other big part we talked about is being wider and longer the interior space. So why don't we go ahead and hop in, be able to show you all the new features with it, but also how spacious it is as well. All right, so now this is the real showstopper, the interior design of this car, which is, wow, it's almost like a space shuttle inside here. Not overwhelming, but just it looks very technology driven and very futuristic to be honest. And, you know, with the traditional smart key, the new digital key they have, you know, put your foot on the brake, be able to hit the start button, vehicle starts right up, no problem. And the very first thing that you're gonna notice from here is going to be this display setup. So it's gonna be from this part to this part, it's a fully digital display. So there's no analog gauges, but it has representation of them. Let me go ahead and get this door closed over here so you can be able to see everything. This is pretty trick. You know, it's, it has, it, it, you know, going along with this material here, this, this fabric on the side of the doors to these aluminum uh, tweeter covers, even down to the instrumentation, it's very retro looking. Something you see a lot of cars are going back towards the, the older days. And there's a couple other things I'm gonna show you in here that kind of you know, represent that as well. But even getting down to the digital display, the gauges that you have up there, I, I think that that's very, very sharp. I think it's very fitting with the style that they've gone with on the interior of this vehicle. And, you know, very crisp, very clear, very easy to be able to read. When I was driving it down here to uh, zero glare, so some people have talked about that worrying if it's a, if it's a digital screen, am I still gonna be able to see it? Absolutely zero issues there. 
you know, pretty typical stuff over here by my left knee. You have, you know, items as far as your traction control and interior lighting to be able to turn on and off. The steering wheel is going to be new for it as well, and I like it. So it feels a little bit on the smaller side, but you can see that these indentations for your hands, they're much more pronounced, so it gives much more of like a sports car-like feel. So instead of just kind of being soft and generic, you know, it, it really kind of puts your hands in place for the driving position, which is once long goes with that almost retro sporty feel to it as well. Uh, windshield wipers, blinkers, headlamps, all the typical stuff. Over here on the left hand side you have all your voice recognition, media controls, hands free Bluetooth, everything's going to be on the left side. And on the right hand side you have everything from your onboard computer to your cruise control to the smart cruise control as well. You know just really really easily laid out, very easy to be able to find. So it's not only does it look good, it's simplistic and it works. Uh, going over here to our main setup, our main dash display for our navigation and radio, super responsive. This is something that you're going to see through the Hyundai line that this is, you know, this is quicker than the iPad. When you turn on the vehicle, this is going to be your screen that you first have. So you have your digital clock, outside temperature display, pretty normal stuff. But you can be able to see just how quickly this is, and it, it works very, very well. So even just sliding across, you're going to see something that you would like, almost like in an iPad or a tablet, very snappy, very easy to be able to use. But everything from your map, navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, pretty much standard in all the vehicles now, all the way down to uh, your climate controls, how you want those to be run, and then getting all to your other setups. One really cool feature I like about this car is going to be the ambient lighting that comes along with it. So if we go over here to setup, into the vehicle, and then we go to vehicle, now we have lighting. From here, we can select ambient lighting, and there's over 64 different colors that we can be able to choose from. And it's this nice LED strip, I don't know if you can really see it right now, but right underneath the AC vents that's going to run, and then along underneath the door panels. So if you got a particular color that you like, they probably have a color that's gonna be able to match it. You know, really, really easy, really, really cool stuff. So if you like the red color to be able to come out during the nighttime, or if you have a specific drive mode, you can pair it with that. So let's say the sunrise red, you want that while you're in sport, put the vehicle in the sport mode, it's gonna come out. You want the, let's say the green to be able to come out, like if you're in eco mode, that would then display as well. And you can be able to go ahead and dim it while you're driving, like they said, link it to a mode, and then be able to adjust the brightness from there. Very cool, very trick, and I think with these line of lights that run along the bottom part of this dash, right underneath the AC vents, it works seamlessly with the design because you have one AC vent over here, two in the center, one on the other side, but you can see that this nice aluminum trail runs the whole length of the front dashboard, really tying everything into it so it looks like one seamless piece. So having that light that runs along with it too really ties that in together. I like it a lot. I think it's very sharp, very well thought out. It wasn't some sort of gimmicky afterthought. They actually planned on putting that in while designing that, uh, that certain part of the car. Now you do have your quick buttons down here. So everything from your navigation to navigation menu, radio, media, of course your seek and track, you know, to be able to seek through radio stations or go through different setups on your uh, mobile devices and then into your setup of the car. But just like with some of the other Hondas that we've seen, the larger display, you can be able to go ahead and put that to full screen or have split screens or be able to go ahead and choose which ones you want coming up when you drive the vehicle. Just as snappy as before, you'll see going to your three, look how quickly it changes between 2D, 3D, and then just be able to move around. Not a lot of cars out on the marketplace are gonna be that quick. Very easy to be able to use. I like that a lot. One other cool thing that we noticed while we were messing around with it too, when you go to your radio display, I like this. Going back to that retro design, you have tubes that are going to be displaying your actual radio station that you're on, like the old transistors that you had in the old radios, you know, back when you were listening to your vinyl uh, tapes, it seems like that style is coming back into it. Once again, something they didn't need to be able to do, but it works really well, kind of tying in with the whole theme of this vehicle. Underneath that, you do have dual climate control. So once again, set it and forget it. Two different zones, so your driver, passenger on the other side, you can sync them, change them, hit your auto button, takes care of where the air is going and how quickly, but you also have three different sets of auto. So a high, a medium, and low. So it's just not one blowing at a certain speed all the time. So it can be able to adjust that to where 
you still want to maintain the temperature but you don't want air blowing in your face or hearing it you can be able to adjust that up and down or just take manual controls from up there and of course front rear defrosters you know recirculating air fresh air coming in easy enough now these are ventilated seats meaning they are perforated but they are three-way heated as well now just because they don't have forced air running through them uh, like during the summertime Having that ventilated seat is still going to be able to help keep it nice and cool because it does have a way for air and heat to be able to wick away through. So when you're sitting on a leather seat for a long time, it will actually keep you cooler than just, let's say, a flat uh, leather seating surface. Underneath that, you do have wireless charging for your phones right up over here in front of the shifter. And it's kind of hard to be able to see, but they got it tucked away, but you got a 12-volt power outlet, a USB, two of them actually, to be able to charge or have any sort of media interface into it. And then the shifter, once again, serves as a shifter but it's this design and it's really contour to be able to fit the whole hand over it which once again is a very nice feature something you don't see in a lot of other different vehicles just the the way that the hand feel of it you know it's it's different but it's it's good drive modes so anywhere from sport to smart to normal and when you hit those just like when we've seen with some of our other different vehicles if you look up over here at the dash we're in normal mode right now if you go into drive mode sport you can see everything kind of changes. You've got this nice carbon fiber layout behind your gauges. Everything's kind of outlined in red, really to kind of give it that racing feel. What's that going to do? It's going to change your uh, engine response, transmission response, you know, shift points, how the vehicle is going to react, giving you a little bit more power in, uh, while you're going through the RPMs as far as holding it there. So it's really going to be able to react a lot differently, even from the steering sensitivity as well. And then you have smart mode. So if you're driving down the road, you start driving a little bit more aggressive, the car is going to respond based on your driving patterns. If you start driving a little bit more conservatively or just on a road trip, it's going to go ahead and take that into account and then keep it to where it's, you know, getting the best sort of fuel economy, you know, making it a, a better driver's car. The other thing you can't see inside this vehicle, and you'd really have to come out and drive it to be able to tell for yourself, is the amount of sound deadening materials they put into this. If you're from San Antonio and you're driving down 1604 with all the rest of the gravel trucks, big semis, you hear a lot of noise. And that can be just overbearing sometimes, especially if it's been on a long, you know, long day after work, you're going home, you just want a little bit of peace and quiet. This car is so, so quiet. You know, I'd put it up there against, you know, your German counterparts and the luxury brands or even some like, let's say, like a Lexus uh, ES model. Super quiet very minimal amount of road noise but even like when you're passing dump trucks and semis you see them you just really don't hear them and that was something that really kind of caught me off guard is like i saw the truck i went by the truck i really didn't even hear it where some of the other vehicles you're driving in you can hear it just clear as day like your window is down now that also helps with the acoustics with the bose sound system so that's going to be their premium sound system inside this vehicle yes they do match the speakers to be able to fit within here so it's just not off the shelf, you know, six by nines or six inch, you know, drivers, anything like that. They've gone through, tested it, figured out what's going to be the best uh, speaker along with, you know, where uh, the power is going to be going for each speaker and then the different modes that you have to be able to listen to to make sure that it is a perfect fit just for this car. So when you add that sound editing material into it, it also improves the overall sound quality of what you hear. Uh, getting back over onto this side too, electronic parking brake pretty typical nowadays for these vehicles. Uh, auto hold, which is nice, so if you're up on an incline on a hill, take your foot off the brake, it's gonna hold it for a couple seconds so you can actually be able to switch over to the gas without rolling backwards. And then a pretty trick rear backup camera. Very clean display back here as well, so you can be able to see your judging points of where you're at. It does also have the prediction, so when you start turning your wheel from side to side, It'll be able to let you know where you're heading. So if you're trying to squeeze in between two cars or a light pole, this is going to be able to help judge you so you're not having to constantly check your mirrors and move around. Really nice, really crisp, really clean, easy to be able to read as well. Now, cup holders, pretty common, where you have, you know, your two up front. This is removable as well. So if you have a little bit of a larger drinks, let's say like a big water bottle or a fountain drink, you can be able to actually take this out, be able to clean it or just be able to slide it back in, be able to take a coffee cup, anything like that as well. Very easy, very cool. And then a storage compartment. Not a lot to be able to talk about there. It's there, but you know, still offering a little bit more from what you'd have in your glove box. And then 
Let's talk about this side right here. This is pretty cool. You know, uh, something that, you know, I've seen it like almost in like, you know, Aston Martins and Ferraris where, you know, when you think of sports cars, you think about somebody as a passenger being able to hold on, having this grab handle right here. But then being so driver oriented, it seems like this one segment is just designed just for the driver. So it's not a car that, you know, you buy out of necessity. This is something that you get in and you really feel special. You know, the, the way that, you know, everything's laid out, everything's at a tilt towards the driver. You know, it, it's really a lot different than what you'd see on any of the other cars in this segment. And I think they've really hit a home run with that. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the back real quick. Well, kind of what you'd expect out of a sedan. Quite a bit of room back here, you know. Uh, if you've watched any of my other previous videos, I'm a big guy. A little over 6'3", right around the 260, 270 mark and lots and lots of space. You know, that's because once again, they lengthened the vehicle a little bit, they widened it as well to be able to really accommodate, you know, everybody inside the passenger compartment. So it's just not the drivers up front and the people in the back have to be able to suffer. If you can be able to tell too, just like with the front seats, these are gonna be leather as well in the back and it does have the perforations for the two outboard ones as well. And one thing I think is really sharp, just like on your door panels, the back of these seats, they still have that same cloth material which really kind of ties into the design. You know, it's, it's a good way to be able to have a two-tone or just kind of be able to mix it up a little bit. Some people love it that I've talked to. Some people don't agree. I think it looks very, very sharp. You know, handsome, I think, is a better way to be able to use or a better word to be able to use. But it, it works very well, you know. You're not going to expect a whole bunch out of a back seat in a car like this in this class, but still quite a bit of space. And a little cargo net back over here for, you know, any, you know, loose items that you don't want rolling around in the front. But in typical fashion, you do have an armrest that comes down, two cup holders back here. You do have cup holders built into both the side doors over here for a water bottle or something like that. But still quite a bit, quite a bit of space, very comfortable. And even like I said, for a person my size, I could, you know, I'm good. You know, I got headroom, I got legroom to spare. So this wouldn't be you know, a bad place to be able to sit by any stretch of the imagination, even if you are a bigger person. But very comfortable. And the one thing, no matter where you're sitting in this car, it's very open. You know, yes, the driver's seat, it has a lot of everything angled towards the driver. You know, it's almost like a cockpit of like, you know, uh, like a fighter plane. But even then, the amount of visibility and natural light that you're getting into the car, it's really ahead of everybody else. And it's nice to be able to get that, and that continues into the rear too. So even sitting back here, looking out the windows, you can still see everything. So if you've got a friend that's maybe gets a little bit of car sick because they can't see anything or they're just not able to adapt to it, I think that might be able to help as well. So two adults, very comfortably back here. Obviously three kids very well. Still has all your same anchor points for all your child safety seats. So whether it's a booster seat, a forward facing or rearward facing, you have everything on there to be able to accommodate that. But then having that extra room back here doesn't mean that you're constantly having to bump or do some acrobatic move to get a child out of here. Very easy to be able to do so. Me being an example, if I can get in and out easily, a child would be able to as well. All in all, one of the more comfortable rear seats I've sat in on these smaller vehicles, hands down. But I mean, that's their whole goal. What they're going after is making sure that this was gonna be the game changer. This is gonna be the new benchmark for what the compact class of cars is supposed to be like. And I think this is gonna give the Toyota Corolla, the Honda Civic, you know, even like something like the Chevrolet Cruze with their Chrysler 200 Dodge Dart, it's really gonna give those vehicles a run for the money because I don't think another vehicle is gonna have as much as this car does, plus the styling. It's, uh, I think this is gonna be the new leader here pretty soon. And I'm quite happy about it because they've had a lot of different generations with these cars from something you bought out of necessity to now something you want to own. And, you know, that's a really big change for them. And I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way that they did it. I think it's going to be, be something that they're going to get a lot of success and traction from. And once again, be the new benchmark for it as well. Well, I'm glad we got a hold of this vehicle today because actually it's kind of hard to be able to keep these on our lot. Every time we get one and we want to do a video, it seems like we're selling it the same day that we got it. So we really kind of lucked out. And if you're interested in this vehicle or coming out and taking a look at it in person, by all means, that's why we're making them so you can have a little bit more information and come in and see if it would be a good fit for you. Between the technology, the body style changes, and everything that they've done, like I said, I, it's the complete package. 
I really think that this is going to be the new leader for the compact segment, especially with the imports such as like your Hondas and your Toyotas. So remember guys, if you like what you're watching and you want to be able to see new videos every week, hit that subscribe button, that little bell so you get the notifications. We're doing one every week on all the new 2021s that we have out. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or things that you'd like to be able to see, make sure you leave them in the comments below. We read every single one of them and we take those to heart. Once again, my name is John Sievers with Roadside Reviews and we look forward to seeing you next week on the next one.